Friedrich Nietzsche, the guy who claimed God is dead, is famous for quite a few things. Perhaps the best reason is his impressive stash. I mean, just look at this thing. Bruh. Nietzsche was a pretty quirky guy. His actual gravesite features two naked versions of himself. The two copies only have a top hat to cover their private regions, which really is a shame. Could you imagine the mustache down there? Nietzsche's a hard thinker to pin down. He's the source of inspiration for basically every diametrically polar social, ethical, and metaphysical philosophy that followed him. He has more interpretations of his work than he has pronunciations of his name. Nietzsche. 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 But one of the stickiest and maybe stinkiest interpretations of his work comes from fascists and anti-Semites who are quick to quote him. White nationalist and all-around turd nugget Richard Spencer the guy who coined the term alt-right and praised Trump with a sig heil. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Also said he was red-pilled by Nietzsche. How could Nietzsche have had such a profound influence on white nationalists, anti-Semites, and fascists? Could it be that Nietzsche was a Nazi? Nietzschean philosophy's brush with Nazism all begins when his sister, Elizabeth Forster Nietzsche, took over her brother's writings after Frederick had a mental breakdown. According to legend, Nietzsche went for a morning walk and witnessed an exhausted horse being whipped by his owner. Nietzsche fell on the horse, weeping. From that point forward, his mind was changed. The pictures from late in his life really capture this. The silly mustache really isn't so funny when you realize these pictures were taken while he was totally out of it. Elizabeth took advantage of her brother's mental state and began publishing edited versions of his manuscripts, pitching them to fascist leaders at the time. In 1932, Adolf Hitler gave Elizabeth a bouquet of roses, and two years later, he presented her with a wreath for the grave of her brother with the words, To a Great Fighter. That same year, Hitler was pictured near a bust of Nietzsche, and his biographer noted that the German philosopher fertilized two great popular movements, the National Socialist of Germany and the Fascist of Italy. It seems Nietzsche was a hero for anti-Semitic nationalist regimes. Ironically, he was also popular among Zionists. Nietzsche's ideas had a particular resonance for some Zionists, including Theodor Herzl, who was donned the spiritual father of the Jewish state. For some Germans, Nietzsche was a Nazi. For some Israelites, Nietzsche was a Zionist. For some Italians, he was a fascist. For all of them, he was a nationalist icon. But what does his actual philosophy say? Was Nietzsche a nationalist? In truth, Nietzsche's work today isn't considered by many, if any, serious philosophers to be nationalist. His moment as the Nazi poster boy relies on his Nazi sister's warping of his work. This is obvious since Nietzsche was a major critic of German nationalism, and although he was relentless in his critique of Hebrew religions, he was an admirer of Jewish people and called out the accursed anti-Semite deformities of his time. He further said he'd have all anti-Semites shot. To him, the Jews are without a doubt the strongest, purest, most tenacious race living in Europe today. It might be practical and appropriate to throw the anti-Semitic hooligans out of the country. Any first-time reader of Nietzsche will pick up on all of Nietzsche's talks of Aryans in his work, which admittedly is a bit sus. But Nietzsche really used the term to describe a culture of people who were pre-Christian and pagan. It's not a racially specific concept, and it includes several people. Nietzsche was not a racial purist in the slightest. His hope was to create a new European citizen, one free of group attachments, be they racial or ideological or nationalistic. So it's pretty clear why scholars are dismissive of painting anti-nationalist, anti-anti-Semitic Nietzsche as a Nazi sympathizer. But at the same time, Nietzsche didn't exactly do himself any favors for some of the more aggressive interpretations of his work. It's a little funny how defensive Nietzsche nerds get when an ungenerous interpretation of Nietzsche's philosophy is presented. But is it really that weird that people would have radically different interpretations of his work? I mean, the guy is on the record for saying some pretty controversial things. But this is likely the reason for the thinker's appeal to this day. Countless readers can take his work in totally opposite directions. 
There is not one way to understand Nietzsche. Maybe that's why even at his gravesite, there isn't just one of him, but three. <laughs>